Okay, hi everybody, this is Andre from the DIY bench. Okay, so a while back um, I explained how I converted a, a CO2 laser to a CNC mill. And the reason for that was obviously the costs of um, maintaining a CO2 laser. For today, I'm going to show you all the different steps and things I tried uh, when I decided to or um, to add the, the, uh, the actual mill. Now the first mode that I tried, um, I mean there was all kinds of things. The, I, 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 first of all I had a router and I mean they make a lot of noise. I ran that for quite a while and I was looking for ways to add a more, something more precision and something that could actually, something with, um, where I could actually put like all kinds of different thickness of end molds into. And with the router you are very limited. Um, I think you get three um, types of, of chuck inserts that you could use this. So the, I mean, the variety available to you is, um, if you're looking at, at, a, at a, a router for wood, there's, there, there's quite a few type of cutters out there, but um, not necessarily like something very fine. Um, so after a few searches on the internet, I found a site where the guy actually used a brushless motor. And the way he did it was, um, if you look at this motor, he replaced the actual shaft of the brushless motor and you can see here uh, this is actually the chuck of a ER11 and that's exactly what he did he replaced the shaft with the ER11 now I mean before I did the searches I didn't actually know that you could buy these separate and it's got a long shaft and it runs straight through and you buy them this one unfortunately I sort off but you get the idea, you buy them like this and they come with, with all the different chucks inside and I actually have quite a few of them and um, yeah, if it fits, this one is a, I think this is a 8mm uh, and um, it actually fits straight in this 8mm, this is a big brushless motor, this is a E-Flight and it uses the standard bearings. Um, uh, it's, it's got an 8mm uh, bearing on both sides and a collet and it actually just, you can push it right in there. A couple of modifications to keep it from sliding but um, I mean I've used this one for like a couple of years actually. Um, it's quite strong and it runs quiet and when you're going this way um, in my case, I use the OSP controller and because I'm in the radio control, I fly models for, for, for as a hobby. Um, I mean, I immediately knew what to do. And I mean, that connects to the motor. This side, I had this battery connector. And this, the laser in, in, in the electronics bay had a 36 volt power supply and I mean this unit can run from anywhere from 11 to I think up to 48 volts so there's plenty of space left and in radio control if you don't have a radio and in this case you don't want a radio in this kind of setup you just use a thing like this and you can set the speed this is basically a servo tester but um, you can also use it to control the speed controller and as you turn it the motor goes up and it goes down in speed so the setup I had uh, before I would start the machine for the cutter which is just my motor speed to what I thought is, is would be appropriate and I would start it so as you see here this is the setup well, this is the initial setup I had 
and the the problem I had with this kind of setup is uh, you you're limited to the end mills you can put in. I think you can go up to a seven millimeter end mill, and, and that's it. Um, so what I did, I had two motors of these. So I modified another one because you only have eight millimeters. Um, I replaced the bearings in another one I had, and I ordered another chuck. This is a this is a ER11. Oh, sorry, the ER16 chuck, and this one can take much bigger um, end mills. And so now um, I could go from seven. Um, I'm not sure to what, but um, that's all I needed. I didn't want to go, wanted to go bigger. Um, so you can buy this separately, and if you can get a motor that will accept a ten millimeter thickness shaft, this will go straight in there. In my case, um, that didn't work so well. Because the space you have in these motors is not very much. So I ended up with a bearing that was so little that it would just disintegrate after a few cuts because it would get so warm. And eventually um, I abandoned all of that. And I bought myself a CNC spindle motor 1.5 kilowatt which was air cooled and I must say it's got just so much power it runs quieter than the brushless motor and it was not a it was not cheap um, with the uh, VNC module and the motor together I paid about 11,000 South African rands but um, it was the best upgrade for this machine I ever did. So if you've got the money, I would say install this directly. If not, then this is some cheaper option to go with. And wait till you can do an upgrade. Thank you guys. Cheers.